it's Jamie from Not So Wimpy Teacher, and it's day three of the Not So Wimpy Teacher Experience. So if you've just landed here and you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's okay. Stick around. The Not So Wimpy Teacher Experience is this very fun event that we are putting on the entire month of July every single day at noon Eastern time, nine o'clock Pacific time. We're doing a training right here on Facebook. The training's range from topics. We did grammar and we're talking about spelling. We're going to do writing, math. We're going to talk about close reading. We're going to talk about setting up your schedule, batching your lesson plans, just all kinds of topics that I hope will get you excited and energized for new opportunities and save you some time. So let's get in the comments. All right. And tell me, is this your first morning joining us with the experience? We'd love to welcome you. Or maybe this is number two or number three. Did you come to grammar or did you come to our spelling training yesterday? Let me know in the comments whether you are joining us for the first time or whether you went to one or two of our trainings earlier this week. I loved doing the grammar training on Tuesday. If you missed it, you can still catch a replay. And yesterday we talked about a spelling routine a spelling routine that focuses more on spelling strategy and not on the memorization of words. Today, we're going to talk about differentiating spelling. All right. Jessica says it's day three for her. Mari, day three for her. Awesome. Crystal, day three. Awesome. Kim, day three. Wow, guys. This is excellent. Darla says this is her third morning and it's been very inspiring. We're so excited. All right, Jessica, her third training, and she's loving them. <laughs> I have lots of, lots of you are joining me every morning. I appreciate that. How fun, because we just, oh, we got third grade from Las Vegas. Katie's here. Sarah says this is her third one. Excellent. Cindy says this is her second morning for her. And Nicole says it's also her second morning, but she's going back to watch day one. That's the awesome thing is I know it's summer and you may have other things, I, you know, you might be teaching summer school, but you might be doing fun things like vacations or activities with your kids, and you can go back and watch the replays if you miss them. But if you're here right now, that means you're going to be eligible for some special giveaways that I have planned for you, and that's always fun, right? Wendy, this is her second morning, and Anna's been watching the replays from the previous days. Awesome. I'm glad we can make this work. So, Let's just quick take a look at the schedule. So if you have not signed up for the Not So Wimpy Teacher Experience, do so. Make sure you head over to notsowimpyteacher.com slash experience to sign up. When you sign up, we'll send you this calendar. We'll also send you a bingo game board and you will receive reminders and replay links. So make sure you have signed up. Notsowimpyteacher.com slash experience. Okay. Today, we're talking about tips for differentiating spelling, and I'm really excited about this one. I was going over my slides this morning, and I was getting really pumped up with these ideas. Can't wait to share with you. Super excited about tomorrow, because tomorrow we have a really special guest, and the topic is a vocabulary routine, one that's going to be simple and not take too much class time or prep time, because that's really important. And then one of the trainings I am the most excited about for the entire month is actually on Monday. Who's going to be there on Monday? I want to see who's going to be there on Monday. Yes, Amy, I do see your comments on YouTube. All right. On Monday, the training is three secrets to transform your students into thriving writers. This is one of my very favorite trainings to deliver. It's so cram full of great tips and ideas to get you just thinking about teaching writing in a totally different way, one that's going to be easier and more effective. Um, so I'm excited to deliver that one. And we're going to be talking about writing all week. So I'm going to kind of start with a bang and then we're going to kind of break it up into some smaller pieces. And we'll talk about mini lessons at independent writing conferences and editing. It's going to be phenomenal. So make sure you're here next week. Totally excited for it. But today, differentiating a spelling. So I was delivering a training in the spring and I remember one teacher's comment. Uh, she said, do you differentiate everything? And when I saw it, it kind of stopped me and I thought about it and I'm like, well, yeah, I guess so. I mean, 
our students aren't going to be on the same level. If you're in a classroom of 20, 25, 30 students, you're going to have different levels. You're going to, no matter what subject you're teaching or what skill you're teaching, you're going to have different levels. And who's in which level is going to change depending on the time of year, the skill. Um, and so, yeah, I guess I am always differentiating. But here's the thing. I don't believe differentiating means that we have to create all new lesson plans for all the different levels and all kinds of different activities for every level. When I first started teaching, that's kind of what I learned differentiating was, or at least what I understood it to be. And so I started thinking like every reading group, every math group, every every group had to have all different activities. So I'd be like, okay, this group's really struggling with this skill. I'm going to go find a special activity for them. And well, this group's struggling with a different skill. So I'm going to find a different activity for them. It was so overwhelming. If any of you have ever done that, it is time consuming and it, it just takes so much of your personal time, but also your classroom time trying to teach all different types of activities to your different students. And I meant well, but it wasn't really what I needed to do to help all of my learners. And so I think over the years, I've just looked for simple ways to differentiate that don't mean a ton of different activities as much as possible or uh, ways to just make it faster and easier, but still effective. I don't want learners to be lost. I don't want learners to be bored. So I do differentiate, but we can make it easier. So spelling. This, this was tricky for me for the longest time. You know, my, my school gave me a list of words. I passed those words out on Monday and I tested them on Friday. For the most part, everyone got the same words. We had, maybe we'd do challenge words and um, either you, you could assign them to certain students or students could just take a stab at the challenge words if they wanted to. But other than that, there wasn't much differentiation happening in spelling because that sounded incredibly overwhelming to me because I didn't have a lot of time as it was. And I didn't really know how to teach spelling. I talked about that yesterday. Yesterday, we talked about a great routine. And so if you did not see yesterday's training about a spelling routine, make sure. And as soon as you're done with this training, go back and watch that replay on my Facebook page or on my YouTube. It's it's going to really help make even more sense of everything we're going to talk about today. But having a routine definitely helped. But still, how can I differentiate? I'm going to have spellers on multiple different levels. How do I help them when really I don't have more than 10 minutes a day to devote to spelling? All right, that's what we're going to talk about. All right, getting right into it. Tip number one is to use differentiated word lists. Now, I will tell you that when I first heard this tip, I was scared. I was like, uh, I don't, I mean, I don't know that I can handle using differentiated word lists. I can't have my kids having different words because it's going to take more time. And it certainly can if we aren't careful. So I used one curriculum at a point in my teaching where you go ahead and you do an inventory of your students at the beginning of the year to decide where they're at. And then you group your students and they all start in different places. So I had like three or four different spelling groups and they all had different lists. And yes, it was very differentiated, but it was an incredibly overwhelming to me. I mean, it just, I, I didn't know how to teach and assess with all my kids on different lists. It just felt so incredibly overwhelming and it took too much time. So let's talk about how we can use differentiated lists and not overwhelm ourselves or our students. This is the big one. This is the key. This is what was missing for me. I had all my students on different lists, but they were actually learning different skills and concepts that week. Here is what makes it possible. Teach the exact same rule pattern um, to the entire class. So the entire class is working on the exact same skill. You can give the exact same Monday lesson to your whole class, teaching the same rules. All of the lists, they're differentiated, but all of the lists are going to focus on that rule. They're just going to have different levels of complexity. 
but they're still all working on the same skill, same lesson. So when you're talking about spelling, when you're putting up anchor charts or posters or whatever you like to do, everyone is still working on the exact same lesson. That makes it so much easier because when they were all on different ones, I had to break them apart and teach them their lessons separately. But since we're all doing the exact same lesson, we can teach that together. Now, the complexity is where the differentiation, where the differentiation is. So let me just give you an example from one week. This is the first week of the third grade spelling, and the skill is word families. And so you can see from these these lists that they are working on uh, four different word families. Now, list A is going to be for some of my struggling um, learners, and it has the same spelling patterns as the other, This the same word families as the other list, but you're going to notice they're all just one syllable words. And besides the actual word family that we're learning, there aren't going to be any other blends or diagraphs that are going to trip them up. It's just the skill we're learning this week. They don't have to have a ton of prior knowledge of other word families, other diagraphs, other blends in order to spell these words. Now, if you look at list B, now we've brought in a few other blends. Like you're going to see a BR, an SL, an FR. So you've got the TH, the WH. They definitely have some diagraphs that we didn't have in list A. So there has to be some previous knowledge for students to be able to succeed on this list. And then if you look at list C, this is going to be um, the list that I'm going to give to my students that I want to challenge. There are multiple, there's a lot of multiple syllable words here. There's definitely some digraphs and, and patterns that you're not seeing in the other two lists. But these students are ready for that. So they can handle our word families we're learning this week along with a, a KN. Um, or the multiple syllables. But when I go to teach the lesson, I'm teaching these word families to all three groups of students. So we've got differentiation, but we've got one lesson that as a teacher I need to prepare for, and that makes it so much easier. Now, I said this yesterday, but I can't say it enough. Spelling instruction is not about the words. It's not about whether they're learning the word den from over on this list, whether they're learning den, then, or open. OK, it's that's not what it's about when it comes to spelling. We we don't want to focus on just memorizing words. We want to focus on learning patterns and rules so that they learn how to spell thousands of words. So it's not just about 15 words this week. I want you to memorize. It is a it's word families that I want you to learn so that you now can spell tons of different words. OK. So there's no point in, um, I'm sorry, it's kind of cutting off my slide there. I guess I got a little excited. There's no point in giving a grade level word if it's not appropriate for the student yet. So a lot of, um, a lot of times you might look at this list here and say, third grade, den, that's not a third grade word. And yeah, I'd agree with you, den, hen, pen, those aren't really third grade words. But what's the point of giving my third grader the word the word when, if the WH makes no sense to them yet. What's the point of giving them that word if our if our lesson is on EN and I give them a WH word and they don't understand it yet and they aren't ready for it. Now they're not even focused on the word family. So they're struggling to even learn the EN because I've given them too much more than they're ready for. So if we if we are just like, I'm only going to give them grade level appropriate words, then we're missing out on the opportunity to meet them where they're at. We want to focus on just one rule that you need to learn at a time. And if we give them words that really they needed to know a lot before they could actually spell this word, and they're just trying to memorize the, the letters. And when they do that, we can see that's when they put the W and the H in the wrong order. And because they were just trying to memorize it, they don't know the WH rules. They haven't worked with them enough. They're not ready for them enough. Okay. And so there's no point in giving them that grade level word when they're not ready for it, but they can still learn the lesson and just use a word that they are more prepared for. Now they're 
actually going to be learning those word families and they're going to grow faster because they're not spending their time trying to memorize letters that don't make any sense to them yet. So this is really important. I love this here. The words on the list aren't important. They should just be the vehicle for learning how spelling rules can be applied. It's easier to actually learn those spelling rules with a simple word than it is with a really long, challenging word that doesn't make a lot of sense to our learners. But if we can show them how this spelling rule or pattern works using a very simple word and make sense of that rule, that pattern, they've now grown. It's a vehicle to show them how they can use this, this spelling rule over and over and over to spell more words. So that's really important to remember as we teach spelling. Sometimes we get really focused on like um, wanting to, to make sure the words are grade level specific when truly all our learners aren't ready for that and it's okay. We can help them to grow faster if we meet them where they're at. Okay, so I saw this question already pop up. Um, well, how am I going to know which list to put my students on? It's especially difficult at the beginning of the year, but um, we want to go ahead and use a spelling inventory or a pretest to determine which list your students should should be on. And so I would recommend doing a pretest and inventory at the beginning of each unit or quarter um, with our spelling curriculum. It's once every eight weeks. And there's a few different ways you can do this, okay? So you might give this inventory, and as you can see, our inventory is so simple. It's just a, a longer spelling test. They haven't been given these words or any of these lessons. We definitely talk to them about how this is just a pretest, and they should just do their best and not be discouraged. It's not a grade on the report card, but simply to help us know what they need. And so it's just a longer spelling test. And what we're doing is we're actually giving them some words from each of the lessons in the unit. And from there, there's a few different ways you can do this. And, and neither one is wrong, okay? You can look at this and you can go through each lesson and you can be like, okay, uh, you know, looking at this inventory, my students, my student here really struggled completely with lesson one. So I'm going to give them list A, but you know what? And lesson two, they did okay. I think I'm going to give them list B. You can do that. You can just, you can go through the inventory and decide which list they're going to get each week and it could change weekly. Now, if that feels overwhelming to you, that's fine. You do not have to do that. What you can do is grade the entire inventory and make more of an average. Like for the most part, my student really was is on an A-list. They really still struggled with the words from the A-list, the den, the will, the sit, the flat. They're not quite ready for B. There might've been a couple weeks where they could have gotten a B-list, but overall they generally are an A. You can do that and just decide, you know what, for this unit, I'm gonna give them an A-list. And that's fine. Maybe there is a week where the words are a little easier for them. And that's not the end of the world. That doesn't mean you're not differentiating. You know, if there's a week where it's a little easier, sometimes that boosts some confidence for them too. So that's okay. But you also can switch a student anytime. Meaning if you gave them the B list, but you notice every single week, 100%, and even when you're looking at their writing, they really are spelling well, then maybe they just kind of had a tough time on the inventory. Maybe they, maybe they are a nervous test taker. You can go ahead and for the following week, just go ahead and switch them to list C if that seems appropriate for the student. So you're not, it's not set in stone. You decided on B and now you can't change. You can certainly change if you think it would be best for the student. But I want to tell you not to overcomplicate things. Um, it's easy as teachers. I just think uh, we want so much for our students that sometimes we can overcomplicate things. And so maybe you're looking at, at your inventory and you're like, you know what, I actually have five different groups of students. I'm going to get five different lists instead of three. I want to tell you that it's okay to just do two lists. Maybe, maybe three lists is just too much for you to handle right now as a teacher. And that's okay. The fact you don't have three different lists does not mean you are not a good teacher and that you are not differentiating. That might just be where you're at right now with the list of kids or with the kids you have, and that's okay. So maybe you just do two lists and you are going through this inventory to decide if they're going to be A or B or B or C based on the skills. Um, but I would not go over three lists. I think three should kind of be the, the max. Um, I think any more than that is overwhelming to you to keep up with. It's overwhelming on assessment day. So I would just keep it to two or three different lists, okay? 
right. <laughs> we talked about differentiated lists. Now let's give away some TPT gift cards because they're super fun. I know that you probably have a lot of things on your wish list. And so I hope this will help. Go ahead and answer this question in the comments. What is your favorite kind of pen or marker to grade with? You know, the one that you can't resist pretty much every time you go to Target, you go and you check and somehow manage to get a few more. I, I didn't want it to be me, <laughs> just me. Okay. All right. I'm going to be grabbing some random answers here to give away some TBT gift cards. All right. Here's going to be my first winner. Laura. Laura says she likes the Papermate Inkjoy gel pens. The Papermate Inkjoy gel pens for her grading. Um, I cannot write with gel pens. They're so beautiful, but I can't write with them. They're the ones I get my, um, my kids for school. So Laura, uh, go ahead and send me an email, jamie at notsoneoutbeteacher.com, and I'll send you a TPT gift card. And then maybe since you have a TPT gift card just to buy your classroom resource, maybe you can buy more pens, you know, next time you go to Target. <laughs> All right, I'm looking for another one. Oh, hmm. Michelle says she uses the Mr. Sketch Fine Tip. I have never tried those. So now the pen addict that I am, I want to try them. Michelle, go ahead and send us an email, jamie at notsoempyteacher.com, and we will send you a TBT gift card. Thanks for being here and sharing with us. Okay. I'm still looking for some more. I, you know I got to pick one of my favorites. You just know I got to. All right. Gloria, flare pens. Oh, they are my very favorite. I have quite the addiction. They're in every drawer, every purse, every bag. There's a few of those flare pens. Do you have the ones that smell? Because they're scented flare pens and um, they're addicting. Gloria, send me an email, jamie at notsonebeteacher.com, and we will make sure that you get a TPT gift card to put towards some of your wish list items. Thank you, Gloria, for being here. How about I just pick one more? Just one more because I'm having fun reading all these different pens. And now I'm going to want to go like pen shopping. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, this, 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 one, this one caught my attention. Vicky, she says she likes colored gel pens, but it's the color purple, right? Vicky, that's my favorite. If the pen is purple, I'm all in. Vicky, go ahead and send me an email, jamie at notsoempyteacher.com. And uh, we'd love to send you a TPT gift card to put towards your wish list on TPT. Thank you for sharing. Okay, I got another giveaway coming up later in the, in the training. So if you didn't win yet, no worries. You still, you still have a chance, but congrats to my winners. We'll get those TBT gift cards to you as soon as you send us an email, jamie at notsoempyteacher.com. Okay, let's go into tip number two. We talked about differentiating the actual words students get, which I think is probably going to make some of the biggest difference because I think if you meet your students where they're at with appropriate words, you're just going to see a night and day difference in how they perform throughout the week and on their assessment at the end of the week, and then hopefully going forward using their new skills and strategies when they write because that's ultimately what we want them to do is to use it when they write and also to recognize them when they're reading. But there's also some simple ways that you can differentiate the learning activities during the week. And I mean simple. They're still doing the same activities. You don't have to do a whole new lesson plan. You don't have to find or create all new activities because that's a lot. Trust me. So these are just some ideas. Now, if you saw my training yesterday, you already know about the different learning activities that I recommended for your spelling routine. We talked about interactive notebooks and task cards and practice sheets. And so I'm going to just give you a few ideas about how you can differentiate these learning activities. All right, let's talk about the practice sheet. I talked about the practice sheet yesterday. It's something that you can do once per week. In my routine, it showed up on Thursday. And the practice sheet starts off with a paragraph of text and students are identifying words with the pattern or the rule that they're learning about that week inside of the text. I love this because it's helping them to see how the reason we're learning spelling words in the first place has to do with writing and reading. I'm sorry, my computer is making a lot of noise and kind of sounds like an airplane is landing. I don't know, it's not behaving today, sorry. All right. 
There's also some, usually some sorting and um, other activities towards the bottom and they get more challenging as you go. So some things you can do with a practice sheet is that you can assign some students that entire sheet while others just do the top half. So the top half is a little bit easier. It's identifying. It gets more challenging when they're having to write the words and then finally where they're having to write the sentence. So if you really have some struggling um some students who are really struggling, maybe they just do the top part with the paragraph, or you can even just ha have them do the paragraph and the, the graph, but not have to do the sentence yet. Doesn't mean they won't get there throughout the year, but meet them where they are now, and then we'll push them um, when they're ready. And so you can assign different amounts of this practice sheet. So same activity, but just giving them a different amount. Now, another thing is that you can allow students to use their spelling list or not use their spelling list. It can be a resource for the students who need it and students who do not need it can complete this practice sheet without having their spelling list in front of them. You can even let your students decide whether they wanna have their spelling sheet or not. Another resource that you can use to help differentiate the practice sheet is their interactive notebook. So I have my students do the interactive notebook on Tuesday, right after we, we do the lesson on Monday and the notebook on Tuesday. And why is because they're creating a reference. They're creating a tool that they can use to be more independent. And so they can use this interactive notebook on activities later in the week, including the practice sheet. The notebook has some rules and examples and will often help students to, to complete this practice sheet easier. Now, once the practice sheet is completed, they can use the practice sheet to help them with homework sheet if you choose to send home a homework sheet. Let's talk about the task cards. I love task cards because they're actually super simple to differentiate. We can have one set of task cards and are struggling on level and students who need a challenge can all be using the same task cards and getting what they need. I love that. So a couple of ideas. Uh, again, resources. You can allow students to use their spelling list and or their interactive notebook if they need to. So while they're going around doing the task cards, maybe they have their interactive notebook with them to help remind them of the rule and some, some samples that have already been completed in their notebook. This is so helpful for most of my students. Um, one thing you can do is as your whole class is working on these task cards and scooting around the room doing these task cards is that you can scoot with a small group of students who need the extra support. It may be that they need the extra support reading the directions on the task cards. They may need some extra support just reminding them and um, pushing them to look at their resources and that sort of thing. Also, don't forget that like our spelling units come with 12 task cards. We give students 10 minutes to do the task cards. During those 10 minutes, a lot of our students will complete all 12 task cards because they weren't super, super hard for them. They were able to get through all 12, but some of our students will complete less. Maybe they do 10 or eight. However many they get done, that is differentiation too. If you're not taking a grade, which I generally wouldn't, but you know your class best. If they're ready for this to be an assessment, you certainly can do a grade, but if they're not doing a grade, um, it doesn't matter how many they get done. It just matters that they were practicing this skill, this strategy, and learning that strategy. Um, so it's okay if they just did eight. Um, look at their accuracy over how many they completed, right? Because that's what matters. Some students are ready and they don't have to spend as much time thinking through the answer or looking through their notebooks. So they get through all 12. Others are using a resource, might um, spend more time reading the task card and thinking about the answer and they don't get through 12. That's okay. That's just some built-in differentiation. It's okay if they don't complete every single one. Now, Differentiating your assessments. Your assessments are already differentiated if you gave different lists. So that is the, if you already gave a differentiated list, it's built in. But there are a couple of other things you can do on the, uh, the assessments. You can assess just the spelling words. You gave them 15 words and you, you know, you do a traditional spelling test. You say the word, they write it, the word, and you grade those 15 words on how they were spelled. The other thing you can do is that you can assess them on both the words and the spelling pattern. So you can assess the words, but then you could ask, you could give them a word that follows the exact pattern, but wasn't on their list. This is helping 
to assess whether or not they actually learned the pattern or they just memorized those 15 words. Remember, the real goal is that they learn the pattern, not just the 15 words, but that they now know the pattern so they can actually spell dozens and dozens of words. Um, some of your struggling learners, this might be just too stressful at the beginning, but you could probably work them up to this place. Remember, you'll want it, that extra word or two or three words. You'd get to decide how many. They should still be in that student's um, level. So if they're on word list A, it should be a one syllable word and shouldn't have all the extra word patterns that they aren't familiar with, okay? Now I have a few more ideas. For your students who need some more support, you can allow more time for partner practice. Do you remember the partner practice activity we talked about yesterday where students are just taking their spelling list, trading with a partner, the partner is giving them the word and they can spell it out loud or they can spell it on a whiteboard. If they get it correct, they just move on to the next word. If not, the partner just puts a check mark on the box for learn. And you can, you know, we talked about spending maybe five minutes a day on this. Uh, partner practice really, truly helps our struggling spellers a lot. Just that extra time working on these, um, on their on their spelling words and patterns. The other thing is that you can decrease the number of words on their list. We showed 15 words, but you certainly could just give 10. This takes off some of the stress that some students see. When they see 15 words, they feel immediately overwhelmed before they even get started. So it's fine to just cross off some of the words so that they have a smaller list for now. And maybe you could gradually increase it back to the 15 over the year if they are ready, okay? Now, if you have some students who need more challenges, one thing you can do is you can, on the assessment, um, or even during Interactive Notebook Day, you can challenge them to come up with a new word that fits that week's pattern. Not like make up a word, but what's a word that's not on their spelling list that still fits this pattern. Now this really gets them thinking about where this pattern exists and, and what other words have this pattern, which is such good work. You can also give specific directions. So um, on the practice sheet, there's a section that says write a sentence. Instead of just write a sentence, you could get more specific and say write a sentence and it has to um, it has to be include something you learned in science or social studies this week. So you're adding more challenge to the writing of the sentence. And that that's fun. I think that students enjoy that. You can also add a dictation sentence to the assessment. Um, one thing with dictation sentences, you can use some words from the spelling list because that helps to ensure that they actually know the words and they're gonna use them in their writing, but you can also include a word with the same spelling pattern that wasn't on their list. Again, we really wanna see that they're learning the pattern more than just memorizing the words, okay? But the biggest thing is just to remember, you wanna celebrate your student's growth along the way. Every student is gonna grow at a different pace, but we still wanna celebrate that growth, whatever pace it is, we want to celebrate how far they've come always in every subject and everything we do is to make sure we're celebrating that growth, not getting discouraged by where they are, but thinking about how far they've come. Okay, I want to do another giveaway. I've seen some questions and I'm pretty excited to answer them. It's coming. Stick around. But I want to do another giveaway. Who would like to earn our third, win our third grade spelling bundle? If you would if you teach third grade and you would like to win our third grade year-long spelling bundle, go ahead in the comments and just tell us when the first day of school is. Um, my children start at the end of this month. So we're already starting to think like we're going to go shoe shopping. So it's kind of scary. Now, while you guys are commenting about your first day of school, this is if you teach third grade. Remember, we only have a third grade bundle right now. Sorry, second, fourth, and fifth. It's certainly something we'd love to have, but we're focused on completing the third grade bundle first. The third grade bundle includes 32 weeks of your spelling lessons done for you. It's literally just download and teach. It's awesome. There's differentiated spelling lists. We've included four for each week. Um, three, we have the A, B, and C like I showed you, but we also have one that mixes them together. And then we have a letter for your family each week that explains the words and the word pattern. There's anchor charts, there's PowerPoints for Mondays, there's the task cards, the practice and homework sheets, assessments, that spelling inventory that I showed you that you'd want to use at the beginning of each unit or the beginning of each quarter, as well as different flexible schedules so you can figure out 
how you can fit spelling into your unique schedule. So I'm looking now at the comments. I'm going to choose a few of these randomly. All right. Here's going to be my first winner. Holly. Holly says school begins August 24th and third grade rocks. Yeah, I, I'm not supposed to have favorites, but I, I kind of have a soft spot for third grade, Holly. All right. Well, you have quite a bit of summer to still enjoy. So I hope you have lots of fun. Holly, go ahead and send us an email, jamie at not so teacher.com. And we will make sure that you get the first two units of the third grade bundle. That's what we have finished. It is a growing bundle. And then we'll send you units three and four as soon as they're complete. So Holly, you are my first winner, but I, I, want, I want more winners. So I'm still looking for some winners. Tell me when your first day of school is. If you teach third grade, all right. All right, here we go. Christy says our first day of school is August 18th. Awesome. Christy, you still have you still have some time to enjoy yourself and work on your tan or travel or just watch TV and, and eat ice cream. <laughs> Whatever you enjoy. Christy, I'd love to send you my third grade spelling bundle. So go ahead and send me an email, Jamie at not so wimpy teacher. Dot com. I'm looking for another winner. I'm looking. Let's see who's going to be my third winner. Mm -hmm. All right, here's one. Jay says, I report back August 16th and the kiddos August 23rd. Awesome. You have plenty of time to keep enjoying your summer, Jay. But I'm going to send you my third grade spelling bundle. That way, you know, spelling is already planned and ready to go for the year. So just send me an email, jamie at notsowimpyteacher.com. And we'll make sure you get that bundle. Oh, that is really fun. You know, my team said to pick three, but I, I want to pick four. <laughs> I never follow the rules. So I'm looking for one more winner. Okay. Um. Oh, I just, I have a soft spot for first year teachers. Hey, Leanne, we're so excited that this is your first year and uh, school starting August 2nd. It's going to be here before you know it. I hope that my third grade spelling bundle will just relieve some of that pressure of all the things that you have to get ready. We're going to make it super easy to teach spelling. Go ahead and email me, jamie at notsoimbeteacher.com, and we'll send our third grade spelling bundle to you. All right. Now, if you weren't one of my winners today, definitely make sure you show up tomorrow because there's more <laughs> giveaways. But also, if you're interested in my spelling curriculum, it is at full year, differentiated, totally done for you spelling lessons. In fact, um, it was so important to my team that these lessons were so easy to implement that you could leave them for a substitute. It would not be stressful for a substitute to have to deliver these lessons because they are simple to deliver. And um, it's all differentiated. You can check them out at notsmovieteacher.com forward slash spelling. Or if you want to take a screenshot of this screen, you can use that QR code, which will take you straight to our third grade spelling bundle. And I know second, fourth, and fifth grade, I know you want our bundle, but we're working on third right now. We really want to make sure it's our very best work. A full year curriculum does take time and we want to give it the time it deserves. And then oh, we will move on to one of those other grade levels. And I'm not even sure which grade level we're moving on to next, but we will keep working through these grades because we want to make spelling easy for you to teach uh, as, as easy as humanly possible. Okay, if you are enjoying these trainings, I just want to remind you that we have a couple of professional development courses. They're online courses. They're self-paced which means you get to choose whether you want to binge watch them, watch them slowly, a video at a time, whatever you want. Also, you get to watch them from the comfort of your home, just like these lives. But the cool thing is you get to watch and rewatch because you get lifetime access. They're perfect for, for teachers in grades two, three, four, or five. So you might want to take a screenshot of this. So you have the addresses. Um, if you're interested in a chaos-free math workshop, one that includes your mini lesson, along with your small groups and centers, and I said chaos free, and I said centers, then you're going to want to check out our Not So Wimpy Math Masterclass, notsowimpyteacher.com slash awesome. Now, writing. <laughs> I did not learn how to teach writing in college, and I struggled when I started to know how to help my students to become better writers and how to get them to actually like writing. If that's you, then the Not So Wimpy Writing Masterclass is for you, and you can get more information at notsowimpyteacher.com forward slash yes. 
Who's taken one of these courses? Just uh, give me a heart in the comments if you've taken one of these courses or tell me which one you've taken. Carrie says she loves the math master class. Um, Kelly says they're awesome. Tammy says she loved the writing master class. <laughs> Crystal says I'm waiting to be paid. <laughs> That's fair enough, Crystal. But um, I, I just, these master classes have helped thousands of teachers and we fill them with really actionable, doable strategies. Yeah. And this is said she's taken both. Laura took the writing. Geraldine says she loved math. Awesome. Guadalupe took the writing. Ah, all of my gurus are here. My writing and my math gurus are here. It's so fun that we get to work together. Um, all right. Some of you are just patiently waiting for your secret word. Secret word number three is engaging. All right, this is our bingo board. And if uh, you have signed up for the teacher experience at notswompyteacher.com forward slash teacher experience or forward slash experience, then you were emailed this bingo board. But if you can't find it, make sure that you head to this, this address and just get it downloaded, notswompyteacher.com slash bingo, because... We give away prizes. We give away TBT gift cards every single day with this bingo board. It's an easy way to win a gift card. As soon as I'm done teaching this training live, then go to the comments for this live and add a picture of your game board if you have a bingo, which I know a lot of you have bingo. I've seen bingo, bingo, bingo everywhere. So if you have a bingo, go ahead and take a picture of it or a screenshot. And when I'm done with live training, it'll allow you to add a picture in the comments my team goes through and chooses a few, tags you, and lets you know that you have won a gift card. So really easy way to get a gift card. Now, if you haven't signed up, you still can. NotZombieTeacher.com slash experience. This is how you get the calendar and the game board and all the reminders. And there's big things coming up. So you definitely want to get signed up. It's only getting bigger. Like we're ramping up, guys. This is just the beginning. Now, tomorrow I teased you that we have a little special guest tomorrow that you're going to want to be here for the vocabulary training. So Caroline, she's she's on the Not So Wimpy teacher team. You haven't had an opportunity to take a training with Caroline. You're in for such a treat tomorrow. She's super fun. She's still in the classroom and she shares strategies with you that are working with her students. And you're going to love this training on a simple vocabulary routine that she has for you tomorrow. And it includes giveaways because I told her to make sure you guys were super happy and got freebies. So she's going to give gift cards and products away. You're going to enjoy it. All right. Now I know there's some questions. Okay. So let me get to these questions. Many of you were asking how to give multiple assessments this uh, in a week. And, um, <laughs> This is why I don't want you to have four or five lists because it just gets more and more challenging. Now, I would start by giving one assessment and having your other students work on what you can have them do is we provide two interactive notebook activities. So you could have them working on the extra interactive notebook activity as practice. And then you give one assessment and then you would move on to the next group. The other thing is that we have them test the 15 words and then at the bottom we have an application. So they can work on that on their own while you're giving the assessments. Now, if you wanna be more fancy, you can always record yourself saying the words and have students use those recordings for their assessment. Um, but I'm pretty simple and I like to just give the assessments. Be careful. I think that sometimes we take too long giving a spelling assessment because we repeat the word 20 times. If we say the word and the student doesn't know how to spell it, then they don't know how to spell it. And that's okay. That's just where they're at right now. But it, it's not like if we say the word 15 times, they suddenly learn how to spell it. So be careful that you're not taking up a ton of time saying the word over and over and over again. That will save you some time. Um, but still a spelling assessment can take, can be done in five minutes. And if you have three, then you can be done with your spelling assessments in 15 minutes. Okay. You can always have your students do free writing while you are testing as well. Lori said, what tips, what are tips you have for using the not so wimpy teacher spelling with our own spelling curriculum for our school? Lori, this is a great question. And I definitely talked a little bit about this yesterday. So if you didn't see yesterday's training, make sure you check that out. There are several things you can still implement if you have a required list of words or a curriculum you're following. Um, we talked about using our spelling strategy. 
we went over the strategy yesterday. It's a four-step strategy for having students say the word, split the word, apply their strategies, and then spell the word. Um, so you'll want that that strategy is something you can use no matter what your list is. So if you haven't seen yesterday's training, go back and check out that strategy. The partner practice, going back and forth with partners, that can easily be used. You also could probably take your current list and differentiate. What I often found about the list was that they were, there were some easier words and then there were some really hard words. It almost seemed like if you split the list up, you could have a differentiated, you could have two differentiated lists um, for your students and still be using the words that your school provided. So those are just some quick ideas for things that you could do to help make it a little more effective, but still stay within the parameters that you've been given by your school. Um, Anna says, are the words they identify in practice pages and task cards just words from their list or words that follow the rule? A little both, a little both, because remember, we're, we're really focused on teaching the rules and the strategies. So we want to make sure that we're introducing different words. They just keep seeing that strategy over and over again. But we also want them to have plenty of opportunities to see and spell their spelling words too. So you're going to see a little of both. Helen asked what a scoot is. Helen, I love task card scoots. We talked about it quite a bit yesterday, but there's lots of different ways to do scoots. This is how I do my task card scoots. I do them from multiple subject areas. And I take the task cards and I set them around my classroom on desks and tables. You do not have to have one task card for every student. You just have to have a collection of task cards. And I go ahead and have my students start with a task card that's closest to them. It might be on their desk, might be on their partner's desk. They go ahead and read it and they put their answer on their recording sheet on the right number. So they don't start on number one. It might be number 13 they're starting with. And then as soon as they're finished, they move to the next closest task card and work. Some people set a timer and every time the timer goes off, everyone has to switch. I don't do that because I find students get off task when doing that because some students are finished long before the timer goes off. And some kids are not even going to finish when the timer does go off. So that stresses them out. So I just have students move when the timer goes off. So if I have 10 minutes to do a task card suit, when 10 minutes are up, then however many you got done is how many you got done. That's how much practice you were able to get in that day. And I consider that to be differentiation. So I hope that helps. Carol says, do you only take grades for assessments for spelling? Yes, I only needed one grade a week for spelling. So I believe strongly, don't try to be a superhero here. If you only need one grade a week for spelling, only take one grade a week for spelling. Uh, so often we think everything we give to students, we've got to got a grade and give them a score, but that's really just causing us a ton more work. And what we're doing is we're grading their practice. I don't want to grade their practice. I want to grade after they've had time to be introduced and they've practiced and now they're ready to show me what they know. That's when I want to take a grade. So I would not take a score in spelling until the Friday assessment personally. Cindy, is it best to have the partners on the same list if possible? Um, no, it doesn't matter, Cindy. They can't. It, I personally just, I teach my students how to use shoulder partners and where to always find their shoulder partner. Even if their shoulder partner changes as I change the seating chart, I tell them exactly where your shoulder partner will be. And so, yeah, sometimes they're on the same list. And sometimes they're not, and it doesn't matter. Because if they're not on the same list, they're just trading lists and reading the word um, and um, having their partner answer it. The only time that, you know, if you know you have a student who's not going to be able to read the word list of their partner, then you might make a modification there. But it's okay if they're on different lists. Um, Patricia, how many minutes do you plan for spelling? Patricia, generally the Monday lesson can take a little bit longer, maybe as much as 20 minutes. Um, but the rest of the week, 10 to 15. Uh, I hope that helps. Maria, do you give spelling homework? And Maria, we talked a little about this yesterday when we went over the spelling routine. So make sure you check out that training. There is a spelling homework sheet. It's I would photocopy it on the back of the practice sheet and you can send it home on Thursday. I am not a huge fan of homework. So I send home as little as I can get away with. But if I send home homework, it's something that I believe my students can do independently. So I believe the spelling homework sheet is something that your students will be able to do independently on Thursday. They've had some time to practice and the practice sheet mimics the homework sheet so nicely that I feel like they will be able to be independently successful and not need a parent to help them. And I feel like homework should be that way. Like it should be something they can easily do. Um, but you don't have to send home the homework. Uh Larissa said, what's the timeline for unit three and unit four to be released? She's talking about our third grade spelling unit, which you can find more information about at notsobeteacher.com slash spelling. 
Um, we just released unit two last week. I promise you, you're going to have unit three even before you've had a chance to teach unit one. Uh, we are we are doing good. We are a little bit ahead of schedule. Um, and we promise you will have the materials in time to use them. But here's the bonus, right? Now when you purchase, it's a growing bundle. So we discounted it. So you purchase now at a discounted rate. And then as we add the new units, you get to download them for no additional cost. So you're really benefiting by the fact that it's not done yet. As we add a new unit, we're going to increase the price. And Caroline, Caroline says, what would you say to a student who realizes they're on the easy list and they're bummed or feel stupid? Caroline, this is such an amazing thing that we need to work through with our students. Uh, I really suggest doing growth mindset uh, activities, especially at the beginning of the year, but bring it back out and talk about it throughout the year. It's so important that we help our students to understand that everyone just has different needs and grows at different paces and that our brain does grow and that it, it's okay if we don't understand something yet, as long as we're working towards it, that the growth is what matters and not right where we started. So um, I think those are just really amazing classroom culture lessons. Look for growth mindset. Read alouds. We have a growth mindset resource in our store. It's phenomenal, but it's something to always be talking about in your classroom that I always want to give you what you personally need. And it might not be what your neighbor needs, but if I treat you all the same, then you won't all grow. And it's just a really, really awesome classroom lesson to work on. Angela says, do you expect students to study at home also? Angela, um, here's the thing. Everyone's home life is very different. And as a teacher, I, I don't like to have expectations of what they should have to do at home. I feel like I get to have expectations in my classroom during the seven hours they're with me. But I also appreciate that everyone's home life is very different and I don't control that. Some parents are adamant that their kids practice spelling every single day and make them write their words five times and test them and all those things. That is their choice. Um, I don't, I think that might be overkill, but um, some parents are going to be at work at night. Kids are at babysitters or they're babysitting siblings or um, they're just on their own. Some kids are doing like club sports and other amazing things. So I try not to have expectations. I send the words home and the spelling pattern home with the parent letter. Um, if they practice some at home, that's great, but I really do like to protect their home time. That's that's their time. Um, I believe very much that we learn to overwork as kids. We go to school for seven hours, but then we're expected to work afterwards. And so it's it's makes sense that as teachers, we can work a full day, but still go home and be and think that we should work more. Um, so I try not to have any expectations of that. They will or they won't, but I only control what happens during the seven hours in my classroom. And I only, I don't even have 100% control over that really. <laughs> um, Susan asked if the task cards are differentiated. One set of task cards, because here's the thing, if you have to prepare a bunch of them. Now it's a lot of work for you. So it's one set of task cards, but you can differentiate how they're used. Some students are only going to get through half of them. Some students will get through three-fourths of them. Some students are going to use a resource like their interactive notebook. So the task card itself is the same, but they're also using their, their own words too when they're, when they're um, doing the task card. So there is differentiation just built in, but you don't have to prepare different task cards. I hope that makes sense. Um, Adrian says, where can I see the previous lessons on replay? Oh, I think you're talking about the not so be experience. First of all, Adrian, if you sign up, not so be teacher, uh, com slash experience, we will send you a link. But if you want to watch some today, you can find them on my Facebook page. Click on the video um, tab or my team. It, um, my team can drop a link to to our YouTube. We have all of the trainings on our YouTube channel, too. So you can go back to the ones that you missed. Um, Otherwise, we will send you replay links. But if you're anxious to get started right now, go ahead and go to YouTube. Just search Nelson Be Teacher and you'll find all the trainings there. Make sure you click to subscribe to my channel because that's how you'll see them. If you subscribe, push subscribe first and then you'll see them. OK. Um, OK, I think. I answered a lot of your questions and you do want to respect your time. If you're interested in my third grade spelling bundle, it is discounted because it is a growing bundle. So you can find it at notsoveteacher.com slash spelling. I really enjoy this time with you. It's lots of fun. I will be 
watching and be a participant tomorrow because we have our special guest, Caroline, coming to teach about vocabulary routines. And I just know you are going to love her. And then I'll be back on Monday for the training. I've been just really excited about helping you to get your get some thriving and excited writers. So have a not so happy day and make sure you stick your, if you have a bingo, stick the picture in the comments for us. Good luck.